Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. In part one of this tutorial, I introduced you to PowerDirector's PIP Designer. In part two, I'll walk you through some of PIP Designer's advanced picture-in-picture -picture features that give you total control over your PIP scenes. Previously, I walked you through the options under the PIP Designer's Properties tab. If you haven't watched that, click the link in the upper right corner now. Watching Part 1 first will help you understand this episode better. You're about to see that PowerDirector is a remarkably powerful program and it's priced at a fraction of what other programs cost. If you want to buy PowerDirector or just try out their free demo, please use the link in the description below. If you do, CyberLink will contribute to this channel at no extra cost to you. If you appreciate the education you get from these tutorials, please support the channel by purchasing through this link. Now, I'll continue the project from that episode and show you how to incorporate things like motion and crop masks into your PIP. Let me start this with a quick explanation on how the PIP designer's timeline works. In this red box, you'll see three tracks for position, scale, and opacity. The gray bars represent the timeline, or duration, of the clip. You can create changes in the clip's location, size, and opacity by placing keyframes along these gray bars and changing the settings for each keyframe. Then, as the clip plays, its properties or location will change, giving motion to your video. The yellow diamonds on the timeline are keyframes. The red diamond is a selected keyframe. So here's how it works. I could select the first keyframe in the position row and move the clip all the way to the left. I could move the clip to the middle of the screen for the next keyframe and to the top of the screen for the third keyframe, and so on. When played back, the clip would move from keyframe to keyframe as it is played. Or, I could place the first keyframe on the opacity timeline and make the opacity zero, then add a keyframe later on that timeline and make the opacity 100%. When played back, the clip would fade in from invisible to full opacity. You can click on a keyframe to select it, or you can use these arrows to jump to the previous or next keyframe. To add a keyframe, scroll to the spot where you want it to be with this marker, then hit the white diamond to insert the keyframe. Okay, we're back to our video collage from the State Fair of Texas. Let's add another clip to the collage and I'll show you some more stuff that you can do. I'll drag the next clip down to the bottom track and drop it. This track is my wife trying a fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The Texas State Fair is famous for frying almost everything. One year they even had fried beer, if you can believe that. So this clip is my wife testing out the fried PB&J. Like before, the clip is too long, as you can see. I don't want to speed it up, so I'll just cut off the part I don't need. If I click on the right end, I can drag it back to the length of the other clips. Remember, clicking and dragging trims the clip. Holding the control key while you click and drag speeds up the clip rather than trims it. Now we have our clip sized and we're ready to work with PIP Designer. I double click on the clip and open PIP Designer. Let's format this clip to match the others. For size, I change 1.000 to 0.335. I check border, change the width to 2, and switch color from black to white. Now instead of just placing this clip, I'm going to add some motion. I click on the motion tab above the clip properties and a new tab appears. Here you see a selection of paths you can apply to your clip. Click a path and it's assigned to the clip like this. Let's play the motion and watch. Hit stop so we can edit what we're doing. Now I like that motion, but I don't want it to run off the screen at the end. Let's look down at the timeline. You see the keyframes along the timeline. 
The cursor is at the first keyframe, which shows the clip mostly off the screen to the left. I click the Jump to Next Keyframe icon, and now we can see the clip has slid to the center. I click Jump to Next Keyframe, and it hasn't moved. Hit Jump to the Next Keyframe again, and the clip has slid off the bottom of the screen. I'll scroll down so you can see it. I like everything but the last keyframe, so with it selected, I know it's selected because it's red, I right click and choose Remove Keyframe. Now the motion track will stop at the third keyframe. I don't even need the third keyframe anymore, I can right click and remove it as well. Let's watch the motion now. Hit stop to return to editing. If you scroll down below the motion paths, you'll find an option for motion blur. This introduces a bit of blur to the clip as it's moving to make it more smooth. Let's click on that and leave the default settings. I think this clip is all set, so I hit OK. Let's watch what we've done. Hit stop to return the cursor to the start of the clip, then hit play. Hit stop. Notice how this clip overlaps the other two clips slightly? We can change that by dragging this clip up above the other two on the timeline. Now I'll play it and you can see the clip we just added is behind the other clips rather than in front of it. Hit stop. Time to add another clip. I'll drag it down to the bottom row. This next clip is a band performing at the fair. As you can see, I've already made this clip the right length, but there is a lot of wasted space around the band that clutters the scene. I want to crop my image to remove all that clutter and emphasize the band. If I take this clip into PIP Director now, I won't be able to crop it. As I drag the image in, the whole image will shrink, so I don't get the crop. We're going to use another tool called the Mask Designer to crop our image before we set it up as a PIP. Click on the clip to make sure it's selected, then click on Designer and select Mask Designer. The Mask Designer works very similarly to the Motion tab in the PIP Designer. You'll see a variety of shapes that you can apply to your clip. For each shape, the white area is the part of your image that you keep. The black area is the part of the clip that you mask or block out. There are lots of shapes to choose from. In this case, I just want a rectangle so I can crop my clip. So I click on the rectangle. You can now see the mask on the clip. You can drag on the white boxes along the edge of the mask to resize it. Notice that we're not changing the size of the image. We're just cropping in and out to include only a portion of the image. Notice that the aspect ratio of the mask doesn't change as you resize it. That's because the mask designer defaults to locking the aspect ratio. This rectangle doesn't work for my project. I want the shape to be the exact same proportion as the other clips, so I need to change the shape of this mask. That means I need to change the aspect ratio. I've scrolled down the Mask Properties tab to get to the Mask Scale section and find the Maintain Aspect Ratio checkbox and deselect it. Now I can shape this rectangle to whatever aspect ratio I want. What I want is something shaped exactly like the original clip. I drag the borders of the mask all the way to the edges of my clip. I could do the same thing under mask scale by changing the width and height to 1.000 each. The mask is now the same size and shape as my clip, which is 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Now I'm ready to resize the mask to crop the image, so I'll recheck the Maintain Aspect Ratio box. Now as I resize the mask, it will maintain that 16 to 9 proportion. I drag the corners in to crop out the unnecessary elements. I can click and drag the mask around to position it just where I want. Now the mask is done, so I hit OK and the mask designer closes. 
I'm going to do another tutorial on the Mask Designer since there are a lot of other things you can do with it. When that tutorial is finished, I'll link it in the upper right corner now. Don't see it yet? That means it's not finished. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe now so you'll be notified when that's public. Okay, our clip is properly cropped, and now we can use the PIP Designer to format it and add motion. Double click on the clip and PIP Designer opens. Let's add the border. Make it size 2. Change the color from white to black. Now we can resize it. Notice that the white boxes around the edges of the clip go all the way around the masked area as well as the cropped portion. If I just type in 0.335 for the scale, it sizes the whole area to that percentage and as you can see here, the cropped portion is smaller than the other clips. I need to drag the corners to resize the clip to where I want. If I overlap this clip with one of the others, I can easily see that I've got it sized correctly. There, we've got the clip resized. Now let's add motion manually. First, I'll position the clip to where I want it to end up. Now I click on the Add Keyframe icon in the position row of the timeline. This puts a keyframe at the start of the timeline. I drag the cursor and scrub a little ways into the video. I hit the Add Keyframe icon again. Now I have two keyframes where the clip is at the exact same spot on screen. Hit the Select Previous Keyframe icon and our first icon is selected. We're going to change the position of the clip for this keyframe. First, let's expand our view so we can see what we're doing. Choose 50% from the view. Now click on the clip in the preview screen to select it, and using the left arrow key on your keyboard, move the clip over to the left until it's just off the left edge of the screen. I use the arrow key so it won't go up and down, just straight left. Now we have a new value for the first keyframe. Remember a while ago I said I would discuss the ease in and ease out checkboxes in the properties. Let's get to those now. When you set keyframes to create motion for something, it will normally move at a constant rate from one keyframe to the next. However, you can make the motion start slow and ramp up to speed, or ease out from it, at the start of the motion, or slow down, ease in, at the end of the motion. We've got the first keyframe selected. Notice I can't choose Ease In. That's because there is no motion for this keyframe to ease into. It's the start of the motion. But I can choose the Ease Out checkbox. Now the motion will start slow and then speed up as it goes to the second keyframe. Let's use the slider to increase how dramatic the Ease Out will be. On the timeline, click Select Next Keyframe. Now we're on the second keyframe. Now we can click the Ease In checkbox. When I do that, the clip will slow down, or ease in, to the second keyframe. I'll increase the slider for the Ease In to make it more obvious as well. Let's watch the motion we've created with the Ease In and the Ease Out. Hit Stop. Click OK to exit PIP Designer and return to the timeline. I've got one more thing to show you and one more clip to add, a close-up of a genuine Texas Longhorn. I drag the clip down to the bottom track. It's a little long, so let's trim it to fit. This time, I'll place the cursor where I want it to end, hit the Split Clip icon, then hit the Trash Can. Double-click the clip, back to the PIP Designer. Let's format our clip like the others. Change Scale to 0.335. Scroll down and select the border. Set Border Width to 2. Change Border Color to Black. 
Let's position this clip in the upper left corner this time, then hit your keyboard's down arrow key five times and the right arrow key five times. Look how fast this tool works when you understand it. Now, let's scroll all the way to the bottom of the Properties tab to fade. We're going to make this clip fade in and fade out. Click Fades to enable, then click Fade In and Fade Out checkboxes. Notice that PowerDirector has added four keyframes to the timeline to start and stop the fade in, and then to start and stop the fade out. Now I want my fade in to start a little later and last a little longer. Let's click the Select Next keyframe on the timeline. This is the end of the fade in. Hold the cursor over the keyframe and it changes from an arrow to a hand. Now let's click and drag that keyframe to the right some. Remember, moving something to the right on the timeline makes it happen later. Now hit the Select Previous Keyframe icon. Now the first keyframe is red, meaning it's selected. Hold the cursor over the keyframe until it turns into a hand, then click and drag it to the right as well. The point is, you don't have to start a motion or a fade in at the beginning of a clip. You can move this first keyframe anywhere on the timeline that you'd like. You can also use the Ease In and Ease Out checkboxes on rotation. You can set an image to rotate on screen and have it ease in and ease out of this rotation as well. Anyway, we're done with this clip, so hit OK. Our collage is complete. Just for fun, let's add a little music to our collage. Let's watch what we've done. We've covered a lot of ground in this tutorial. You've seen how to format one or more video clips over a background image using the PIP Designer. You've also seen how PIP Designer can be used with other PowerDirector features like Time Lapse and Mask Designer. PIP Designer is a powerful tool to help you set up picture-in-picture -picture effects with lots of options to create a variety of creative and professional effects. The PIP properties are extremely easy to use. The motion properties are simple to apply and can be adjusted to create the path you want with a little tinkering. Remember, sharing is caring. If you would share this video on social media, I would really appreciate your help. On screen you'll find a link to the complete playlist of PowerDirector video editing tutorials, so please check them out. If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to hit the like button. Also subscribe to this channel so you know when more videos are released. Thanks for watching.